Hey guys, welcome back to your channel where today, yes, we are going to talk about last night's game. I watched the whole thing, and let's just say I am bitterly, bitterly disappointed in this team for multiple reasons, and we'll get into that later in the video. But first we're going to go through scoring, then go through stats, and then I will get into my rants. So, let's go ahead and get started with the scoring. So the Packers were able to score first in the first quarter with an Anders Carlson 37-yard field goal for a 3-0 Green Bay lead. Second quarter, it was all Vegas with a Jacoby Myers 9-yard touchdown pass from Garoppolo on a play that was terribly designed. You're on the 9-yard line and you play 10 yards off so you can get an easy touchdown, Joe Barry. Really? This is why people, even though you guys play decently, want you fired because of stupid stuff like that. So Vegas took a 7-3 lead. That Daniel Carlson had a 26 yard field goal for a 10 3 Vegas lead. Third quarter, the Packers were able to take the lead off an AJ Dillon five yard touchdown run for a 10 10 tie game. And then Anders Carlson had a 22 yard field goal attempt for a 13 10 lead for Green Bay. And then fourth quarter, Josh Jacobs had a two yard touchdown run for the final score of 17 13. And now we're going to get into the stats. Yeah, it was not pretty. Jordan Love, 16 for 30 for 182 yards, no touchdowns, three really, really bad interceptions. First one, he completely did not see the linebacker, threw it directly at him. Second one was a tip ball by Marcus Peters that was deflected back into the linebacker hand for the second pick. And the third pick was the game sealer after, on a third and ten after two drops by Romeo Dobson, Luke Musgrave. He just decided to go for it, even though we had two more downs of plenty of time. Under threw the ball and then got picked off in the end zone going for Christian Watson. His Easily his worst game by far as a pro. Easily his worst. Uh, running game, A.J. Dillon, 20 carries for 76 yards and a touchdown. I know it was a little low per carry, but he had some really good runs today. The problem was, for a good portion of the runs, like he was just met in the backfield immediately by Max Crosby. Because the O-line apparently could not block the one guy on the team you have to block for the Raiders. Calm, calm down. Calm. Calm down. You can get into rant later. You don't remember stats. Uh, Jordan Love, 2 for 37 as well. Uh, Christian Watson, 3 for 91 and 77 yards as is long. Has 7 targets though. Really needs to get better at that. Uh, Luke Musgrave, 6 for 34. Josiah Aguara, 1 for 19. Ben Simmons, 1 for 12. Dontavian Wicks, 1 for 10. Jaden Reed, 1 for 7. Romeo Dawes, 1 for 4. It's not good there. Isaiah McDuffie had 10 solo ta 10 total tackles. Rudy Ford had a pretty good game. Had 9 tackles, a pass deflection, and an interception. Um, Kenny Clark had 5 tackles, including a sack. Rasul Douglas had 2 really good pass deflections. He had a pretty good game. Quay Walker had a good game. Had a good tackle on Josh Jacobs, but he ended up leaving with an injury. So that's not good there. Uh, Darnell Savage also left with an injury. Uh, Rashawn Gary had a sack. Uh, Preston Smith and Kingsley Anibari both had sacks as well. And so, pretty honestly, pretty solid from the pass rush today. I was really impressed with them. But, and run game wasn't terrible either, holding Josh Jacobs to 69 total yards, only under 100 yards rushing for the entire game. So, good job on the rush defense there. So, I'm really impressed with there. Rudy Ford had an interception. Anders Carlson continues to be impressive. Two for two on field goals, long of 37, and an extra point made. Perfect on kicks all year. And for special teams as well, we were able to force two misses by Daniel Carlson. One of which was blocked by Josh Neisman, which gave the, some opportunity for the Packers to get back into the game. But unfortunately, offense was not able to capitalize on it. And then Dan Whelan, another pretty good game punting, had a 46 yard average, one inside of 20, along with 54. So, first off, let's go over some positives. One, we actually did pretty decent against the rush, against, granted, the worst rushing team in the league, but Josh Jacobs is st still a really good back. We held him to 69 yards, average 3.5 yards. Even with a 24-yard long rush, we did pretty good. They were mainly able to get us pretty good on some sweeps to wide receivers, so they're during the tackles from there. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo was pretty efficient, though, but averaged 6.1 yards attempt and then had three sacks and a sack on Josh Jacobs, technically. So so four sacks for the Packers there, which is really, really good for this defense. And I really got a shout out special teams here. Um Again, Andrews Carlson, for all the, the struggles we thought he would have, and he did have in the preseason, he has been perfect this year. Dane Whelan, the only Irish guy in the NFL, pretty good punter. And I will shout out Rudy Ford as well. 
He has been playing on fire with a man possessed, been a pretty decent run defender, and again, back-to-back weeks with interceptions for him. And Rasul Douglas made some really good heads-up plays there. But now I'll get to complain. We'll start off with the least culpable aspect, which is the defense. The defense actually, like I said, had played really well. The game only 17 points, so the game you should win. But there were just some play calls by Joe Barry in situational awareness that really was confusing. I was on both of the Raiders' touchdown drives. The first one was in the first half when they had first and goal at the nine. Uh, we decided to leave their slot receiver uncovered for about 10 yards as the safety, Rudy Ford, was in the end zone during the play. That's just the easy, just touchdown, let him run, and he's going to get in. Why would you do that? Why, 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 why? And on that second touchdown drive, because we were holding Devontae Adams to, like, no receptions at all. Up until that drive, one reception for 12 yards. But then, all of a sudden, he gets hot. You want to know why? Because poor Preston Smith, one of our pass rushers, edge rushers, guy who was pretty good against the run, had a sack today, had a general really good game, was asked to cover Devontae freaking Adams in the slot. And it's like, what on earth are you doing? I felt so bad for my fiance because I was watching the game with her last night. And I was yelling at the TV like, why are you covering Devontae Adams with Preston Smith? Like, we're doing good. Rasul's doing good on him. Jair was doing good on him. And it's just, why? Because they got easy three easy completions. Two of them when Preston Smith was on him. And it's like, that's not Preston's job. He's not supposed to be covering Devontae Adams. And so other than those like infuriating signature Joe Barry moments, which I still think he should be fired because stuff like that is inexcusable, the defense did its part. It played well enough to win the game. Who didn't play well enough to win the game is this entire offense. And I know people are going to make this reaction that, oh, Jordan Love sucks. And he threw three interceptions. Like, yeah, no, Jordan Love is part of the problem in this game. He played bad, made some really bad decisions, but it is not all Jordan Love's fault. Off. It's like, yeah, he has some blame to share. Absolutely. Absolutely stunk it up the day, and it's like, you're kind of concerned about it because it's like the second straight week he kind of played really bad. And it's just like, what are we doing here? But Matt LaFleur, I need to talk to you. Because what on earth was your game plan? Seriously. I know like, oh, Aaron Jones was out last minute and I had planned everything for him. It was like, you're the head coach. You should have known that it was a possibility that he could have been out. And you should have had a backup plan to deal with that. Because there were so many scaredy cat chicken play calls that I saw this game from the offense. Especially in that first half when we struggled. It's like it's the third and 11 and he call a screen to Patrick Taylor. When you have, honestly, good receivers and a quarterback who loves to throw deep. And is pretty good at intermediate throws. And so you throw behind the line of scrimmage. Good for you. And also, what is with the offensive line struggling to stop the one guy, the literal one guy you have to stop in order to beat this defense? We could not stop Max Crosby when we knew he was the one guy you had to stop. Because the offensive line struggled. There was pressure all over Jordan Love. On two of those interceptions, there was like really big pressure in the face by Max Crosby. Got so many quarterback pressures. And it's like, the rest of Oakland's, I mean not Oakland, the Vegas' defense is hot garbage. They're not good. They're not great. Except for Max Crosby. You cannot let him dominate the game like he did. And you know what we did? We let him dominate the game. With the offensive line, that's four-fifths of the starters from this year. And it's just like... What are we doing? And there was like, there was some adjustments at halftime. We got the run game going a little bit, but again, the play calling was not great. And it's like, what are we doing? What are we doing? There is no identity with this team. Like, I think Matt Floor is a good coach, but he is quickly testing my patience with the way he's calling this game because. I think he's calling him like he still has Rodgers back there. I'm like, I love Jordan Love. Aaron Rodgers, he is not. And it's like, what are... It's just... No. <laughs> like, you're calling plays. Like, you're trying to have Tucker Craft, a rookie tight end, 
come across and try to block Max Crosby on a run, it's like you think you still got Mercedes Lewis back there. You don't have the same weapons you did, Matt. These plays might work on paper, but you need to adjust to make sure these plays work in-game. And this offense needs better execution. Jordan Love needs needs to be more consistent. That's that. So now we're heading to our bye week, and it's like, man, we are a bad, bad football team. Let's see, where's Green Bay? So look at our schedule. We have the we're at Denver coming up in two weeks, and if we lose to the Broncos, you really have to start looking at the coaching staff because. There is no way that we should lose against the Raiders and Broncos because we are better than these teams on paper. That is just a fact. And so you got to look at the execution of this team and what they are doing. And then if not, if you don't win against the Broncos, especially against the Vikings without Justin Jefferson, things are going to get really, really ugly. I really hope that that is the case. Not not the case and that we get our crap together. But after the last two weeks, I have no idea. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel for more. And yeah, I think we're going to have a few more rants about the Packers coming up here in the following weeks. But I'll see you guys again soon. Hopefully I can get my power rankings out tonight. And tomorrow will be my NFL predictions. And Thursday is going to be my last week in review before I get into off-season covers for the Milwaukee Brewers. So thank you guys so much. And I'll see you again soon.